For this exact reason, I tell you today that while some may doubt the power of prayer, we should not doubt the power of prayer. Where some will doubt the power of prayer, the devil himself knows the power of prayer. The devil himself knows that prayer is powerful. The devil knows that prayer is able to uplift. The devil himself knows that through prayer that we are able to endure. For this exact reason, the devil in his army works around the clock. The devil, he works hard to create doubt about the power of prayer. The devil don't want you to pray to the Lord. And so I would ask all of you today, do you doubt the power of prayer? I would ask you today, do you use the power of your secret weapon to combat the devil? Do you use the power of your secret weapon to overcome? To overcome the season changes. To overcome all of the obstacles that that stand before you. Do you use your secret weapon? Do you use the power of prayer to overcome all of your afflictions and all of your tribulation? In our scripture for today, Jesus shows us the power of prayer. Jesus, he shows us the power of prayer through the cursing of the fig tree that we see there in the 11th chapter of Mark's gospel. In the 12th through the 14th verse, we see where Jesus cursed the fig tree. And in the 20th and the 21st verse, we see that a day after cursing the fig tree, that Jesus and the disciples, they returned to its location And we're told in that scripture that that Peter noticed that the tree had withered away, that it had dried up from his roots. Now, I remember a long time ago when I looked at this passage of scripture, I couldn't understand its point. I couldn't understand the purpose of it. I couldn't understand why Jesus cursed the fig tree. Now, scripture, it tells us there that this particular tree, this fig tree, that it had bloomed. It had fully bloomed, but it had did so, we are told, out of season. It had the appearance of being a healthy fig tree, and from afar, Jesus saw the health of the tree. And so Jesus, a hungry Jesus, by the way, went to inspect this fig tree saying to himself, perhaps there may be some fruit that is on this tree. But as Jesus got to the tree and as he inspected the fig tree, there were no figs. The tree, it had leaves, but the tree, it was fruitless. Now, if there's anything that we know about the Lord, as we have seen over the past month, is that the Lord, he's not a fan of trees that are fruitless. God, he desires for trees to to bear not some fruit, but for trees to bear much fruit. So the hungry Jesus, when he saw that the fig tree had no figs, he cursed the fig tree. So Jesus, in cursing the fig tree and in returning to the fig tree, He took a moment in time to teach the disciples yet again about the power of prayer. Jesus, we will see there in my key verse there, the 23rd verse, we'll see where Jesus, he explained to the disciples that they had power, that they had the power to do what some may say would be impossible. Do you realize that you have that same power today? Jesus explained to the disciples that they had the power to move mountains. 
I ask you again today, do you realize that you have the power to move mountains? Because all of us who genuinely follow Christ today are his disciples as well. I want you to understand that you have the power to move mountains in your life. Now, I want you to understand today that Jesus was not talking about us being able to physically pick up a mountain and move it. Jesus, I want you to understand, he was speaking about the power of prayer. And because he was speaking about prayer, Jesus, he was speaking spiritually. So to be clear here, I want you to understand that Jesus, he was speaking about us having the power to be able to move the spiritual barriers that stand before us in our journey. All of those obstacles that, that may block our path, that may hinder us in our growth, that may keep us from bearing fruit in this world, Jesus tells us that we have the power that we have the authority to get rid of those obstacles, to tear down those barriers. Do you believe that today? Come on. Come on. Um. Prayer, I want you to understand that it is so powerful that it can help you to break through, mm -hmm. that it can help you to overcome all of your obstacles. To the Corinthians, Paul wrote, though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare, Paul said, are not carnal, but they are mighty in God for pulling down strongholds, casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. I want you to understand again that prayer is powerful. We're in the 11th chapter of Mark's gospel. Our key verse for today is the 23rd verse. And my thought for today is the power of prayer. Again, prayer is so powerful that we see in scripture that after Jesus had first chose the 12, one of the first things that Jesus taught them on the Sermon on the Mount was to pray to the Father. Prayer is so powerful that one of the first things Jesus taught the disciples how to do was to pray. Prayer again is so powerful that we are repeatedly encouraged throughout Scripture to guess what? To pray. Why do you suppose that we are Encouraged throughout scripture repeatedly over and over and over again to pray. We are encouraged to pray over and over and over again through scripture because we are in a spiritual warfare today. As we are growing in this field mm -hmm. with the desire to bear much fruit, to be fruitful, to flourish in this field, the devil is running throughout the field, as we saw in my last sermon, right. sowing his seeds of wickedness mm -hmm. to hinder us in our growth. Paul said it best again. We do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but we wrestle against principalities. Yeah. We wrestle against powers, against rulers of darkness. We wrestle against spiritual hosts of wickedness everywhere. In our homes, in places of public, even in the church, Paul said. Why else do you think that we need to pray? As I said in our Sunday school lesson today, we go through some things. You better believe that you need prayer. You better believe that you need to rely on the power of prayer prayer to think with all of that in mind mm -hmm. the skeptics they really believe that they can go through life without prayer Come on, the skeptics really believe 
that they can take on the devil and his arm, man, with their own strength and with their own might. Who in the world are we to think that we can defeat what we can't see? I'm telling you, you can have your billions, but you're not going to defeat the devil. You can have trillions, but you're not going to defeat the devil and his army. The devil will beat you down if you try to take him on without the Lord. Again, I say to you today, you better believe that you need the power of prayer. To the skeptics, I again say to you today that I am a living testimony of one who has a happy and a healthy prayer life. I am a living testimony of what the power of prayer can do for you as you are growing in God's garden. So one may say that prayer doesn't work, but I say I tell them today that prayer, you better believe that it does work. So why has the Lord answered my prayers? Why am I blessed and highly favored? Some may begin to wonder. Some may wonder, well, does God answer your prayers because you are a pastor? Does God answer your prayers because you are a preacher? I would say to them, absolutely not. Some would say, well, is it something special about you? And again, I would say to them, absolutely not. There's nothing special about me. I'm a man just like the next man. I'm human just like all of you. I am flesh and blood. So what is it? Why am I able to stand before all of you today and testify about the power of prayer? What is it? Why does, why does the Lord move on my behalf? Someone somewhere may be wondering. In order for all of us to enjoy a healthy and a happy prayer life, Jesus, he tells us the first thing that we need to do. We are told there in the 22nd verse, right there prior to my key verse, that Jesus, he said to the disciples about having the power to move mountains. He says to them, have faith. He said, have faith in who? In God. Not in man, not in some idol, but have faith in God, the sovereign one. All right. yeah. Jesus, he did say it there in the 24th verse. Mm -hmm. He said, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus he has given us the first key to prayer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you doubt prayer today, if you are struggling with prayer today, Jesus, he gives you the first key in order for your prayer life to turn around. In order for you to have a happy and a healthy prayer life, Jesus, he says to you today, have faith in the Lord. Mm -hmm is what Jesus says there. Sadly, so many prayers, they have fallen dead. They have fallen dead because they have been prayed with a lack of faith. Prayer should not be prayed in a lack of faith. But sadly, again, it has happened. The writer of the book of Hebrews wrote that without faith, it is impossible. It is impossible to please the Lord. is what the writer of Hebrews said. The writer went on to say, for he who comes to God, they must believe that he is. The Lord said, I am. The writer of Hebrews went on to say, they must believe that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Not one who seeks him off and on, mm -hmm. but one who diligently, one who steadily, one who always seeks him. Mm -hmm. 
The faith that has the power to move mountains, I want you to understand, we must understand today, it is the faith that lives in total submission to the Lord. It is the faith that lives in submission to his will. It is the faith that lives in submission to his way. Total submission to God, it requires one to put God first before themselves. In complete submission to God, there is complete obedience. In complete submission to God, there is complete commitment. In submission to God, there is total trust in him. Think about this. God, he is faithful to all of us. God, he loves all of us. Love, it is submission. God, he is submissive to us to supply our every need. Why in the world do we think that we don't need to be submissive to him? Hello. Why, why do we think that we can, can pray to God but not be submissive in our faith? Why do we think that God will reward us when we are lacking in faith? You see, there comes a, a great difficult for many of us to live in total submission to the Lord. Someone may wonder, well, why is that? See, the reason why it is difficult for many people to live in submission, in total submission, to the Lord because they look at submission as sub, uh, subservience to the Lord. And subservience, it comes with this thought of one losing their free will, losing their ability to choose. I don't know if you recall this, but earlier this year, we saw where the Lord created us in his image and in his likeness, where God, he gave us freedom of choice the ability to choose him. God, he gave us free will. The Lord does not desire to snatch away our free will. Every day that we live in this world, there is a choice. Whether we are going to take this journey all by ourselves or with help. Every day that we are growing in God's garden, there is a choice that we make, whether we're going to try to grow by our own roots or whether we're going to let the Lord tend to us and help us in our growth. Are we going to try to bear fruit by our own power or are we going to bear fruit by the Lord's power? There is a choice of obedience or disobedience. Rather than living in submission to the Lord, many choose to live in submission to themselves. They believe that they are living free. They can do whatever it is that they want to do is what they believe. The whole time that they are living in submission to themselves, they're actually living in the bondage of sin. And in sin, their roots do nothing but dry up. And in sin, they do nothing but wither away. That tree, it becomes a rotten tree. It becomes a tree that decays. And as I said in my first sermon in this series, it becomes a tree that does nothing but fall over because his roots have dried up. You see, the believer today, we ought not desire to end up like that withered fig tree. We, we ought to desire to, to remain strong and in good health so that we can, again, not only make it in this world, but so that we can flourish and bear much fruit in this world so that we can prosper while we are growing in God's garden. Now, many people expect prayer to work for them, but their faith, it is either incomplete or they have no faith at all they aren't living in total submission to the Lord. 
Some are of a mindset where they trust themselves more than they trust what God can actually do for them. Rather than wait on the Lord, some of us, we doubt that God heard our prayer. We doubt that the Lord heard our cry. We doubt that the Lord heard our call. We doubt that God is moving on our behalf. Now, where does this doubt come from? Doubt, it typically enters into our heart through affliction. It typically enters in through in our hearts through tribulation, through our struggles. We, we tend to, to fear. We tend to have great fear when things get tough, right. when things get difficult. And rather than lean on the Lord, we get out ahead of God and we try to make things happen for ourselves. The mindset of doubt and fear can lead to a spirit of defeat as well. It can lead to a spirit of despair. And as you have heard me say before, one can become paralyzed with the spirit of fear and the spirit, the spirit of despair, especially when it settles into their hearts. In his letter, James wrote that those who pray while doubting, they shouldn't think that they will ever receive anything from the Lord. So the skeptic will say that prayer doesn't work. The skeptic will say that God doesn't hear their prayers. And to the skeptic, I would say, yeah, you're right. The Lord doesn't hear your prayers. The reason why God doesn't hear your prayer is because you are doubting him. God, I want you to understand today, the Lord doesn't hear the doubter's prayer. You see, the Lord, he listens to the one who is of faith. When the one of faith cry out to the Lord, that's who God not just hears, that's who the Lord listens to. So I say to you today that we must be confident in the Lord. We must be confident in not only the Lord, we must be confident in our prayers. As John said in his first epistle, we must be confident that if we ask anything according to God's will, he will hear us. And again, you and I, we will be confident that we have the petitions of what we have asked of the Lord. What John wrote is exactly what Jesus said to the disciples when it comes to praying in that first key of prayer. Our prayers, they must be prayed in total faith without hesitation and without doubting in the Lord and what he can do for us. So many of us, we look around and we say, God, give me a sign. Guess what? That's a prayer of doubt. We must trust in the Lord. When you have prayed, trust that God has listened to you, that he heard your cry and trust that God is then moving on your behalf. That is how you enjoy a happy and a healthy prayer life. Now in total submission to God, we should understand that there are more things that comes along with being able to enjoy a happy and a healthy prayer life. We'll see here today that many of those that doubt the power of prayer, they do so because, again, they believe that God does not give them what they have asked for. Many people tend to look around at what others have and they wonder where theirs is. You begin to have a heart of jealousy and, and covetousness, which you have heard me say before is very dangerous for the believer. Rather than living in submission to God, rather than, again, totally trusting in the Lord to provide for them, many tend to live in submission to their lust and their passions. And they go after their lust and their passions. 
ignoring everything else, including their faith as well. This is a mindset that is of the world. Mm -hmm. And with the mindset for the world, many people, they pray to then obtain the riches that are not of heaven, but the riches that are of this world. Mm -hmm. They pray to obtain great wealth. Again, I say to you today that this is a desire that is of the world. And this is the desire that is in their hearts today. Mm -hmm. Jesus, he has warned us about this. Jesus, he has already warned us about trying to serve mammon and trying to serve the Lord. Jesus said that one cannot serve two masters because he will love one and despise the other. Again, love is submissive. So in other words, one will submit themselves to their lust and their passions while despising the Lord. Again, we cannot serve mammon and also serve the Lord at the same time and expect God to move on our behalf. Don't think that you're going to be out in the world today seeking out riches of the world and think that God is going to move for you still. Many of us, we look at Jesus' statement of whatever things you ask for, believe you will receive them. We look at that and we ignore everything but the whatever part. We, we look at that whatever and we look at that whatever, whatever we ask in a total lack of understanding. Yes, the Lord will give us the desires of our heart, but there needs to be some clarity about this statement. Mm -hmm. There needs to be some clarity that we, again, is brought to us so that we can fully understand what Jesus is saying there. Because again, many of us have run off with that statement and think that we can ask God for anything. Right. So let's take a look at the surrounding context of what Jesus said there when he said whatever. Jesus, as we see in the surrounding text there, Jesus, he was speaking about the, the fig tree. And again, he was disappointed with the, the fig tree being fruitless. And he had spoke to the disciples there again in the 22nd verse there, again in the scripture out, uh, surrounding our key verse there. He had been speaking to them about the power, having the power to move mountains. The believer we know is supposed to be able to bear much fruit in the world. The believer is not only supposed to be able to bear much fruit in the world. We also, again, we have the power to deal with all of our struggles. We, we have the power to, to move mountains through again, the power of prayer. Prayer, we again should understand it is our line of communication to the Lord for his helping hand. We don't have to try and take on life. We don't have to try to grow in this field. We aren't growing in this field by our own power and by our own might. You see, I say to you today that we ought not be praying to the Lord for selfish gain. We ought to be praying for Again, all of those that are around us as well. Mm -hmm. You see, I say to you today that we ought to be praying for help for not just ourselves to be able to overcome in all of our hindrances. But again, we ought to be praying to bear much fruit to help all of those that are around us as well. Mm -hmm. In the power of prayer, James said that prayer it has the power to save the sick. All right, all right. James, he said that prayer has the power to cover a multitude of sins. James, he was saying that prayer, it has the power to bear the holy and righteous fruit of the Lord. And the holy and the righteous fruit of God, it can save souls. 
we recall from John's gospel that Jesus, that he said, you will ask what you desire and it shall be done for you. But there was a kicker there. The kicker was that again, by this, by again, by this, my father is glorified through what the father has provided. Jesus says there that we bear much fruit. The father is willing to give if what we have asked will lead to him being glorified. The father is willing to give whatever you ask for. If the whatever is about bearing fruit, that is holy and righteous. Do you hear me here today? God will always bless you. Mm -hmm. The Lord will always give you the desire of your heart. Mm -hmm. If it glorifies him, there's another key Mm -hmm. to prayer. You and I must remember that the Lord planted us not to grow in our own selfish ambitions. The Lord did not plant you to grow in your greed. The Lord, he planted you to grow and to bear much fruit, not for yourself, but for all of those that are around you. As I was taught, and then as I learned for myself, God, he does listen to our prayers. And when he listens to the prayer of faith, he's going to answer yes, no, or wait. God's answer to prayer is where many of us lack understanding when it comes to understanding how prayer actually works. You see, many of us, we believe that, again, we should get whatever it is that we ask for. Jesus, he, however, makes it plain and clear that the prayer of doubt goes unanswered. The prayer that is done out of lust, it also goes unanswered. The prayer of selfish ambition Jesus has made it very clear as well that it also goes unanswered. In other words, those prayers, they get answered no by the Lord. God does not move when it comes to those kinds of prayers. You can pray all day long about your wants, but the Lord, he desires to supply your every need so that you can bear fruit. That is the prayers that the Lord will answer. As Jesus said, when he taught the disciples how to pray, the father, he knows our needs before we even ask them. The Lord, he knows our struggles growing in the field. He knows our afflictions that we go through in this world. And he desires for us to faithfully come to him so that he can again move on our behalf so that he can supply our every need so that we don't end up being like the withered fig tree growing in his field. So when you ask of the Lord, understand that he knows your needs. He doesn't care about your wants. When you ask of the Lord, Understand that the Lord is desire for you to come to him, to pray, to ask of him with the desire to bear holy and righteous fruit. With the desire to glorify his name in the world. You see, if you go to the Lord with the desire to bear the holy and the righteous fruit and to glorify his name, the Lord is not going to tell you no. The Lord will either give you an outright yes or the Lord, he has something better in mind for you and he will tell you to wait. Sometimes the Lord's yes is instantly revealed to us, but a lot of times we simply have to wait on him. That's what faith is all about. Waiting on the Lord. We have to wait for our blessings 
when you pray, don't you go out and try to get ahead of God. Wait on the Lord. Again, the skeptic will say that God never gives them what they want. To the skeptic, I would ask them, is the supplication of your heart to glorify the name of God? Is the supplication of your heart to bear much fruit? Mm -hmm. If your answer is no to that question, well, it's time for you to reevaluate your prayer life. Mm -hmm. Because, yes, the Lord is not going to move on your behalf. Yes, the Lord is not going to give you what you want Mm -hmm. because you have no desire to testify of him in the world. Mm -hmm. You don't have a desire to bear holy and righteous fruit. You don't have the desire to glorify his name. The Lord, he desires to give us his heavenly kingdom, not the riches that are of this world. Let us take that with us today. God, yes, he will help us in our every need. Sometimes he helps us before we even pray about it. But when it comes to the desires of your heart, Let your desires be to glorify the name of God. Let your desires be to bear holy and righteous fruit, not for yourself, but for all of those that are around you. I would ask you today, do you trust God? Do you trust the Lord to supply your every need? Do you trust the Lord to make it so that you can flourish in this world so that you can prosper in this world? If you truly do trust the Lord, then you must live in total submission to him. No, you may not end up being rich in this world. Yes, you may have struggles growing in the field. But again, trust that God is going to make a way for you. The Lord, he knows all about your struggles. As Jesus told us that the world is going to hate us. The world, the Lord knows that the world is going to hate you. Jesus, he told us that we will face tribulation due to the world, but most importantly, due to our great adversary, the devil. Again, I want you to understand God knows exactly what you are going through today. Through our prayers and through our faith, Jesus has told us that we also will overcome. We will grow and we will flourish in this field. Let us remember what was said in the first psalm about the trees of God. Firstly, the trees of God will bring forth fruit in this season. That's very important for you to know today when it comes to prayer. This is important for us to understand because God's trees, they actually don't bring forth fruit in every season. They don't bring forth fruit all of the time. God trees, they bring forth fruit when the time is right. When the time is right, we will bear fruit and the father will not be displeased by the fruit that we bear. We must understand that not every season will be a fruit bearing season for us. So let us not be dismayed when we go through a season that may appear to be a slow season for us, a season where it appeared that we aren't flourishing. The skeptic will give up on God during those seasons, but we must not give up on God during those seasons. Let us remain prayerful. In those seasons, you see, those seasons are seasons of rest for us. Every tree needs rest. But I want you to understand in our seasons of rest, that doesn't mean that it is a season where our growth comes to a halt. Be prayerful as your season of rest is still a season of growth as well. As it said in the third chapter of Ecclesiastes, to everything there is a season and a time for every purpose under heaven. Some seasons may be a season of struggle, of affliction and tribulation for us. But again, as James said, we should rejoice when our faith is tested 
And again, we should pray to the Lord in those seasons. Let us again trust in the power of prayer in our time of struggle, in our time of affliction, in our time of tribulation. And it is, as it is said about the trees of God, our leaves, they will not wither no matter the season that we are going through because we abide by the rivers of God, regardless of how harsh the weather may get, regardless of how harsh the season of tribulation may be for you. Again, I want you to understand today that the trees of God, they do not fear. They are not anxious in those seasons because our leaves, they remain green. We are still in good health when our life is filled with prayer and total submission to the Lord, our God. See, typically we have a bad habit of judging ourselves by the fruit of others. However, I say to you today, stop doing that. Stop judging the fruit that is growing from your tree by the fruit of another. You see, not all fruit is the same. Your fruit, it is unique. You see, some folks, they are bearing fruit in the world that ain't holy and righteous. I wouldn't want my fruit to be like their fruit, if you get what I mean. So don't judge your fruit or whether, again, if you may be fruitless, don't judge your fruitlessness by the fruitfulness of others. Because your season, it is coming where you will be fruitful. I say to you today, in whatever season you may be in right now, do not fear. Be prayerful. You should lean on your secret weapon. You should lean on the power of prayer. Through prayer, I say to you today, you will overcome. Through prayer, I say to you today, you have the power to make it on your journey. Through prayer, you have the power to grow in this world where it may not be even conducive for you to grow. Where the world is always trying to kill your soul, I tell you today, through prayer, you will live. Through prayer, you have the power to move mountains. Through prayer, you will not only grow and stand tall in this world, through prayer, you will bear fruit. Through prayer, you will bear holy and righteous fruit. You will bear good fruit, not just for yourself, but for all of those that are around you through prayer, you will save souls. You will cover a multitude of sins through prayer. You will do the good works of God through prayer, through prayer. You will make it, but everybody around you that are open to eating of your fruit, they will make it through prayer. All of us, we will dance and we will shout all over God's heaven. Through prayer, through prayer, we will live on forever and evermore. Everlasting life is promised through us, through faith, and you will live it through prayer. Amen. 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 Amen.